Hi, my name is Jennifer Mitchell Early. I help individuals and teams achieve organizational and personal success. And this is Leadership Matters. Are you new to training, um, looking to make a career change or just wanting to learn a little bit more about what it is, um, your profession, this industry, and what makes folks good um, instructional designers, consultants, and or developers. Well, you've come to the right place. Today, I wanna talk to you about why I don't design or facilitate training programs without doing a needs analysis first. So let me just tell you a story. Um, early, it was early in my career. I was a um, training specialist for a, a bank. I was on the retail banking team. I designed training programs for supervisors, assistant managers, managers, and personal bankers. So any of the platform representatives, um, those were the ones that I conducted supervisory leadership and our managerial training, which we refer to as soft skills training for. So um, I have been with the bank for a little while and on the team for a little while, but I was brought into for the first time a conversation with a client. Typically the managers um, in our department and the director and or the director would meet with the clients and do consultation, talk to them about what was going on, you know, and what they thought the, the client would tell them what they thought the issues were, what the problems they wanted to have addressed. And then it was the manager and or um, in conjunction with the director who would come up with the training solution, bring it back to uh, the department, assign it to a team and then to a team member. So this is my first time being invited in on this conversation, right, with the client. It was a vice president of retail banking. Uh, the problem that he assessed was there were lots of errors coming back on IRA forms. <laughs> Needless to say, this was a big deal, not only for the bank, but for our customers who had, you know, federal and IRS liabilities because their forms or documentation revolving around their IRAs, Roth IRAs, uh, required minimum, minimum distributions, et cetera, were not being completed correctly. So he wanted mandatory training for all platform level. Again, those are your, my personal banking specialists, um, assistant managers and banking center managers, anyone who would be responsible for engaging a customer and completing the documentation. He wanted all of those employees trained. Exciting, right? <laughs> not, not a big deal. I had been doing training a, a little while at that point, development, so I wasn't, um, you know, I, I wasn't intimidated by the task. I didn't know anything about IRAs. Again, not a big deal because the way that I was raised up in training and development is you spent time out in the trenches, understanding, you know, the job so that you could train to it. We didn't have any canned programs. All of our programs were developed from scratch, taken through the entire Langevin learning or Langevin, however you pronounce it, learning services design cycle. So great. I go to the operations area who does the back office area who handles all of the IRA documentation, paperwork, errors, corrections, all of that. So I went to the IRA department. I sat with the ladies. It was about four ladies. And of course, needless to say, especially during tax time, this department was inundated with, you know, documentation and errors like the reporting and all of that and making the corrections uh, on these on these documents to make everything to to make the customer whole with the IRS. Right. 
So I go, I spend time out in the trenches with the department. I learn about different IRAs. I learn about the documentation and the paperwork. You know, I go through all the paces. I see how tedious it is to, you know, not only review the documentation, but then to make corrections and sometimes send it back out to the banking center to have the customer, you know, re-sign documents they've already signed. And you know, that was not fun for anybody, especially not the customer. So I did that and I developed this training. It probably took me, now this was at the beginning of my career. I've been doing this for more than 20 years. So this was back in the 90s. I'm gonna date myself now, so late 90s. And so back then we really took development seriously, you know, and how long it takes to develop. We weren't developing like on, um, you know, it wasn't microwave development. It wasn't, you know, we want it now you got a week to develop it, you know, things that we've kind of grown into now um, with with different ways to develop training and iterations and sprints and things of that nature. So, um, so anywho, I developed the training and it probably takes me about, I don't know, a good six weeks to develop this training. So the training that I developed um, entailed a pre-assessment number one to see where everybody was to like get a benchmark so because it was mandatory training the VP made it mandatory for every employee to go through the training during our pre-assessment I determined if they could pass the pre-assessment um, with 80% or better that they would test out of the class they would not need to take the class and the VP thankfully agreed to that the problem is it's about 15% of the platform employees actually successfully tested out of the program. Um, and the testing out was very tedious. They had to complete every form associated with every IRA product that we sell at the bank. And so it took them about four hours to do this assessment. Needless to say, I didn't really have any friends in retail banking. My name was Mud because it was, again, a tedious process. It was comprehensive, the paperwork, all of that. Um, and so about 15%, as I stated, tested out and they didn't have to take the class, but the other 85% did. It was a full day, eight hour training where we painstakingly went over every IRA product, every associated document, how it was to be completed, and it was um, fine, you know, the culmination was an assessment that they had to complete in order to pass the class. I probably ran that class about three times before every um, manager was certified to, you know, IRA specialist and we wouldn't have these issues. So um, I'm often asked about the projects and the training I've done over my career and you know what which ones i like best which ones i like least which what were my challenges and let me just say this this particular project or um, program often comes to mind i would definitely today do that differently and let me tell you how i would do it differently and why i would do it differently one that project taught me the importance of doing a needs analysis. Even today, even as a learning and development consultant who works on, you know, soft skills as well as, well as technical programs uh, for one project, I had um, probably two weeks to design my first program that my client didn't even want to give me a full day for, even though I knew that it required eight hours. I had to prove it to the client by running the program and letting them see how tight and how constrained time was for them to give me the eight hours. But that eight hours led to a whole curriculum, a whole suite of courses for that training. And, and some of the problem is in the fact that as when we talk about technology, as a system is being built, right? They're the main, at least for this client and this project, their main focus was, hey, we got to get, we have a go live date. We have to get this up and running. We're only concerned with doing what we do today. Not necessarily understanding how robust the system is or building onto the system, just being able to transition from one system to the other. And we have to be able to do that on this date. And because they were, they were not a department that relied on training or that even 
uh, realize the benefits of using formal training. They did their own side by side. They had their own culture. They didn't realize how much time goes into development. They thought they could throw together a PowerPoint, do a presentation and their people would be good. That's because not everybody is a trainer. That's because training is more than presentation. That's because training is more than a PowerPoint slide deck. And training is even more than the handouts or uh, copies of the slide deck that you are given. Training as, as it relates to instructional design takes thought. It takes applying adult learning principles. It takes understanding what the boots on the ground, the actual employees need to know in order to be able to do their job. So um, what I had to, what I had to learn and flex in was I'm, I can still do it. I've done this a long time, but I cannot um, compromise my standards in doing so. And let me just, you know, follow me as I flow, as I flush this all out. At the end of the day, when a client calls you and they want a training solution, what I learned from the project that I outlined, the IRA project was a client really can't tell me the training solution. A client can elaborate on the problems, the performance gaps, um, the issues, their, their expectations, where they, where they want their workforce to be. Like we're at A now, where the workforce needs to be tomorrow at C. But B is the bridge. I am the bridge. I bridge A to C. In order to do that, I have to do the diagnostic. It's like when you go to a doctor, you can tell them, hey, doc, I don't feel good. My stomach hurts. My heart has been, you know, I've had heart palpitations and all of these things. But you can't tell the doctor, you know what? I think I got high blood pressure and I want you to diagnose. I want you to prescribe this pill. It doesn't work that way because you don't have the training and the expertise to be able, nor um, the qualifications to make a proper diagnosis, right? If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to it. Or if there's another, I'll get back to you and, and try to respond to your comments. Uh, if there's some other topics around this that you um, have questions about, you'd like to see videos about, drop those in the comments as well. If you like this video and you found it valuable, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new content. Thanks so much. See you on my next video.